tithe to celebrate fathers. You know, and we as believers know that whatsoever we thank God for, I want you to know that whatsoever we thank God for multiplies. Now, that is confirmed in John chapter 6, verse 11. Please, I don't know. Maybe you are going to change the location of this our gen. As I'm preaching, it is interfering with my spirit. I don't know how you are going to do it. But please help me. Thank you. Thank you. So like I said, if you want to enjoy the power of multiplication, apply thanksgiving. That's just a simple way. And how do I know? Show me John chapter 6 and verse. John chapter 6 and verse 11. Are you there? I read, and Jesus took the loaves. Look at that. He took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sad, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they could. Verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered together, fill and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five belly loaves, which remained over and above unto them that have eaten. Look at that. Jesus took the bread that was not enough. Now, you don't have to wait for your father to be good before you give him thank, him, thank God over them. Anything you thank God for, hear me, God makes to multiply for you. Anything you thank God for, whatsoever we thank God for, is made to multiply in performance. Write that down. Whatsoever we thank God for, is made to multiply in performance. That's why that thing that is not working, thank God for it. Thank God for your spiritual fathers. Thank God for your biological fathers. Thank God for your area fathers. Thank God for fathers that have given you platform. Because fathers are those that gives you feathers to fly. Now, who is a father? A father is anyone giving you feathers to fly. What I mean by feathers to fly is not as a witch or as a bird. I'm talking about people that create the platform for you to shine. They are fathers. Whatsoever you thank God for, listen, whatsoever we thank God for is made to multiply in performance. So whatsoever you thank God for multiplies in, in performance. Now that's why take advantage of today. Let your fathers receive at least a message of appreciation and if you can gifts of send recharge cards to them send gifts to them if you can credit the accounts today credit it and send the message i'm doing this because you have been a father now you see that that heart will be gladdened to do more am i communicating now to my poem the thug father is not a title but an assignment. Not a position you get into because you have biological children, but because of the role you play. This is why you at times see an adult holding on to some young men saying to them, this is my father. No wonder God is referred to as our heavenly father, not our heavenly mother. Imagine why God decided to call himself the father of the fatherless, not the mother of the motherless. It shows us how high God opposed the position, assignment of a father. Therefore, if you still have a father or a husband that plays the role of a father very well, Jump up now and say, Oh God, I thank God for my father.
If you still have one, I don't expect you to be on your seat. Jump up and say, oh God, I thank you for my father. Do that and sit down. Just like we say, whatever you thank God for, whatever you thank God for, receives a special grace for, from him for much and better performance. Now, to round up my poem, Psalm 68, verse 4 and 5, shows us how important the role of a father is. Psalm 68, verse 4 and 5. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah and rejoice before him. Verse 5. A father of the fatherless, a judge of the widow, is God in his holy habitation. When God gives you a father, he has given you a man to represent him on earth over your affairs. Can we clap for fathers, please? Thank you. What does it take to become a father? Now, this message, I'll be preaching directly to the men. And I also want the women to learn. Now, our young ladies, please learn so that when you begin to trust God for the kind of a man that will become the father of your children and your, hus your husband and the father of your children, you will know what to look out for. Because most times, people look for spouse with closed eyes. I always tell you, you close your eyes when you are praying for a spouse, but you open your eyes when it is time for you to choose among the men. You open your eyes to observe these things. Who, sorry, what does it take to be a father? Number one, the determination to live an exemplary life. The determination to live an exemplary life. The determination. Now, any man that will be a father, a proper father, the kind of father that is being talked about in the word of God, is a man that will make up his mind to live an exemplary life. Now, which means a man that has made up his mind that he's going to make himself an example of whatsoever he wants his children to become. Now, how do I know this? I took my time to study, and I saw what God said in Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, let's quickly go there, and verse 2. God said to the entire children of Israel, he said, look to Abraham, your father. God was courageous enough, you know, to say to the Israelites, entire nation, imagine for God to be talking to a whole nation, or the Diori lady, and God said, oh, you nation of Israel, hear the voice of the Lord. He said, Vasu, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, that be you. Look to them. Now, the word look to them means they are the example of what I want you to become. They are the example of who I want you to become. How many biological fathers today can beat their chest and say, yes, my children, look at me. I want you to be like me. Now, are you bold enough, courageous enough? We don't have plenty of fathers who are ready to say that. So it means that there are so many biological fathers, but less real fathers. A real father is anyone that determines to live an exemplary life, you know, to his children. Now, either spiritual children or natural children, he's courageous enough to say, look at me, learn from me, hallelujah. God said, look to Abraham, your father, no matter the number of children you have, hear me, if you are not a good example, you are not a father. No matter the number of children you have. If you are not a good example, you are not a father. Fathers are examples. No matter the number of children. Obama, be more be equal, that could be 1,000. 
Go out. Come on here. Baba mini here. Baba mini here. Baba mini here. It is not what makes you a father. What makes you a father is the determination to live an exemplary life. That your children can look at you and learn. I will show you what to learn. That's what makes you a father. And that's what will make your children to respect you and want to honor God in your life. I want to say, that's my father. Now, if your children cannot take a look at you and learn, then you are not a father. You are to be an example to them. Example in which of those areas? Let's put this one in A, B, C, and D. A, you are to be an example to them in your relationship with God. Your children should look at you and know how to serve God. Now, it means that if you are not serving God, you are not a father. Your children should look at you. What should they learn? How to serve God. Does it pay to serve God? Yes. I always tell my children, it pays to serve God. I want to thank the Lord. He has given me three children, and by the grace of God, the devil has tried severally to take one of them several times with one thing or the other, but God has defended them. The God we serve. When our firstborn was very sick, I told us a little bit of that story last week. You know, she was running out of blood. She was losing blood. We didn't know what happened. But it was that, I remember that night, a, a child died around us. And the same thing that child was saying before she died was when my firstborn was saying that night, Daddy, hold me. Daddy, please don't let me fall down. Hold me tight. I called my wife. I said, something is wrong with this child. She's just saying, hold me tight. Hold me, don't let me fall. Daddy, please don't let me fall down. And she was just taking water, taking water. And it was not the go, go, you know, good, good days, the days of good, good that when you quickly type symptoms and get answers. It was not that day, those days. Those days we had answers, but the answers we had were just majorly for calling. The Siemen, the Motorola T190, which one again? Ericsson, uh, sir? Nokia 3310. If anybody using Nokia 3310 that time was a rich person. You see Nokia 3310 among the great. But we that are just coming, you see Samsung flip cover, you know, Motorola T190, uh, Siemens, Ericsson, and so on like that. So I told my wife, it was around 1 a.m. What do we do? She became afraid. And she said, honey, let's go. I jumped inside the vehicle 1 a.m. in the morning. We drove straight. We got to Nia and Sons. They said there is no bed. But the nurse that attended to my wife, because I also was very sick. I was in the car. I was just driving by Grace. She followed my mom with my daughter to the, to the clinic. They said, this baby has gone now. What are you looking at? That this girl, this girl has gone. There is no blood. She's pale. No bed. Then somebody said, let's go to Olu Yoruki. I didn't know whether I flew that day. I drove like this bond. By the time we got there, they quickly attended to us. They said, ah, she's gone. She's going. She's losing blood. She's losing blood. They started recommending, oh, take blood sample. By, look for blood banks. Let's go and begin to look for blood. But that night, the God that I was serving appeared to her. She, got, she said she, she's, where she was sleeping, she saw that man who used to watch his film, Jesus. What kind of film do you use to watch in your own house? If it is the devil's film you're always watching, it's the devil that will visit your children. He said, I saw that man. The man came to me and told me that, don't worry, you will not die. He said, the man prayed for me. And do you know that the second day morning, when the senior doctors that used to go for ward round, they have not given her blood, though. they were quickly treating infection. The cause where the blood, when the blood, uh, the blood shot of short, uh, uh, shortage of blood. The doctor tested and checked and said, this girl doesn't need blood. In fact, you must discharge her today. Who recommended that she needed blood? Miracle happened. Listen, the easiest way to make your children serve God is for them to see you serving God. About a month ago, we didn't know that, you know, uh, our, uh, the, the gen we use at home was leaking. So the whole fuel was drained. I needed fuel. We need to, you know, we, we needed to prepare for service. So I left home around 5, I think 5.30 or 5.30. Do you know that when I was driving on the road, I met a couple by the roadside. Daniel Fred's daddy and Daniel Fred's mommy. Daniel Fred's daddy 
is the man in charge of the uh, gen. They call him the man in charge of power in their church, Victory International Church. Danefret's mommy is a woman in charge of the ushering. She's the ushering coordinator. I met them on the road, 5.30 a.m. Do you know that I had to, I didn't tell my wife, I had to leave my own need. I carried them to church. Husband and wife, I now ask, where are your children? He said, one is in high institution. The other one is preparing to meet us in church. I was impressed. Us, your children should meet you serving. Now, the, the, the position both of them occupy, they cannot afford to be at church, in church late. Head usher will be the, the, the man in charge of the fuel of a gen must be in church ahead of everybody. He, if he doesn't own the gen, technical cannot set. If he doesn't own the gen, all the lights, the decorators cannot set their lights. And the woman in charge of the ushering must be there on time. She will call all the ushers. They will pray, plan, strategize. You know, we are still a bit small. We are going to become big in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the church where they have almost 50 ushers. Your usher herself is one church. I was listening to the Reverend Mide Emmanuel. He said a, a, a pastor was bragging. He said, you know, I passed on 120 people. The Reverend Mide Emmanuel said, he told him that, that 120, my choir is 120. Only our choir is 120. The man now humble himself. Only choir is 120. You are pastor 120 and you are bishop doctor. So, you know, we are going to, we are going to get there Amen. when we have 100 ushers. Amen. When the chief usher will crack his brain, you know, very well and pray. Ah, usher number 49. Go to post 49. Go to 64. Amen. And they will be using walkie-talkie to communicate. I was impressed. Your children cannot serve God. Hear me. If they don't see you serving God. You don't teach them God by preaching. You teach them God by your service. Mommy is in the choir. Daddy is in the ushering. God said to Israel, look to Abraham, your father. So, number one area, your your. What was the A part? Your relationship with God. Now, confirm that. Genesis 18, look at it. 17 to 19. Let's confirm. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to verse 19. Genesis 18 from verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? I have secret that I want to carry out. Will I hide it from Abraham? No, why will I not hide it? Verse 18 and 19, let's go. Verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. God didn't stop there. In verse 19, Abraham is going to be great, oh, I will not hide my secret from him. But in verse 19, for I know him. Why do I know him? What do I know him for? That he will command his children and his household to do what? After him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Can you see? He will command them. They shall keep the way of the Lord. To do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. He will command his children. His children will follow after him. Now that's where a father is. Now if you are thinking that your father is wicked. This is what God wants. So that you catch the fire of service to God from him. Hello. Now, apart from that, look at the next one. B, another area of examples that you should be to your children. Your, sorry, your honest report should influence your children to live in honesty and truth. Your honest report is so in here. Look up. Your honest report should influence your children to live in honesty and truth. Do your children know you Sorry, no, you are living a fake life. Some, some of you are living fake life. Oh. And you know, if you are living a fake life, your children will learn fake from you. They will try to be posing to be who they are not. Abraham was an honest man. Look at what Jesus said about his father. Let's go there. John chapter 8, verse 38. Your children should see honesty from you. Not that they should, should teach it. They should see it. How many times have they come to arrest you in front of your children? 
How many times have you told your children, tell that man that is coming that I'm not at home? Oh, yeah, go, on, go, on, go, on, go and stand in front and tell them that I'm not at home. And the person is saying, warn your daddy. If your daddy come back, your daddy is at home. If your daddy come back, tell him, tell him that this thing, this thing that he's doing, one day I will arrest him. You know what you are doing with that? You are teaching your children crooked ways. Now look at this. Jesus said, I speak that which I have what? I didn't hear. Seen with my father. What they see is what they, they do. And you do, you, you do that which you have seen with your own father. That me, oh, whatever you see me doing, I'm doing what, I've, what I'm, I've seen in my father. Being an example is the best way to train children. I'm doing that I've seen in my father. Now, I always tell my children, I, when me and my wife, we talk to them, have you ever seen or had any day that anybody come to our house and is shouting, give us our money, oh, our money, oh, our money, oh, and you'll call your daddy out, call your daddy out, and then you'll saying, daddy is not at home, and daddy is at home. Good job. Honest report. Oh, have you ever seen anybody come to our house and say, ah, ah, and you'll that's your daddy, eh, that's your daddy, tell him to leave my daughter alone. She's the one that used to tell us, that daddy, daddy, one man met me in this city, he was telling us one day, he didn't know that I know his daughter. He didn't know that I know his daughter, and the man is toasting me. He didn't know that I know his children. If the daddy is like that, will she tell me what that man is doing? It will be easy for her to fall. Hello, am I communicating? I don't think you are here. Live a honest life. To live a honest life, I always tell you, live a size per time. Mama, no one's in control where you to. Don't lay a kind of example that your children will say, I want to do the same. If you tell them to defend you with lies, you are teaching them that they can use lies to defend themselves. But Jesus said, anything you see me do, I'm doing what I've seen where in my father. See, let's look at see. I have seen B. See, let them look at you, listen, and notice this. Your hard work, hard working attitude should teach them to know that money does not come by luck. Your hard working attitude should teach them all this one that you see today's children want to do Yahoo. You see, in fact, I pity the next generation. Go to all these birth centers. Go and see our youths, young people. I don't know where they learned it from. Money does not answer to luck. Money answers to work, hard work. Abi, hard work. At least the bag be gone going in say, the lo patin say, don't pay in, ke wa play, te de play, ti no won do. O shu o pe abi brother ge kolele. Oh, sure, okay, and Loleo, okay, you five thousand. Abi, but the bag be five thousand. Losina in that bed. So, so sure, who my buying father? Who sure? Only Kalu Kaluni. Emma, who care? Mule Joe, Mule Lima Joe. Oh, she, she, gun kick gun gun you to bar, nine that bed, you know. Ah, number for me, Miss Jen Bigon, Jen Bigon, Talumara, Talumara, Talumara. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you go go you le ramon party to bara wo le fe pa because that's your job let your children see you working working hard your children should not see you sleeping around where is that we are asking one of our uh, uh, the girls in our school she's in nursery i think pre nursery or nursery one what does your daddy do say my daddy used to sleep you sleep from morning to night. That's what my daddy does. He used to sleep. And there is no time you see the daddy, you see his face is jonesing. He wants to just sleep. That's why we notice. When we tell the child to write, if he writes one, two, by the time you get to next, I'm tired, I want to sleep. Uh, sir? Yes, he has learned it from the father. But you know, Jesus said, even up to now, my father walketh, and I must walk. 
Let your children learn hard-working attitude from you. Let them learn it from you. I always thank God. I'm not praising them. I'm not needing one lower. I'm not. They learned reading from us. If I pick pen, ti pen no bakpari mi oni file. A child of a lion can never be a goat. It's not possible. A lion, if a lion should give back to a goat, go and find out. They stole that goat. I mean, they stole the baby of the lion and put a goat there. If that child is lazy, maybe it's not your own. Maybe they have swapped that baby in the hospital. And if that child is hardworking and you are lazy, that child is not your own. Now, go back to what we are saying. Should our ch- that's, I'm showing you who a father is. Ah, a father that knows that there are responsibilities tied to his neck. In the second service, I'll show you more. He, he's a working man. A good father is a working man. At times like this, when we get to a point in second service, I will show you. He feels like eating suya. He can't eat it. He wants to, but he can't. He can't. If I, when I was writing one of my points down there, at the second service, I'll tell you more. You can't see a very responsible father. It's not common for you to see responsible fathers going to shop for clothes for themselves. Most times, eh, it is their wives out of compassion for them. That, I let me try. Out of compassion for them, he will neglect himself. He does not even have shoes. Let me just buy this one and take it home for him. The man that pioneered this Christ's apostolic church work, our CAC fathers, one of them was, I was with one of the elders, they said when some of them died, they could not count two agbada complete among their clothes. Were they poor? No. But they are the father's heart. This work must go beyond this generation. Help me ask your neighbor. Okay. Don't ask your neighbor. So you know, your neighbor will not slap you. So your hard working attitude should teach them to know that money does not fall as come by luck, but by active commitment to legitimate business. Money comes by active commitment to legitimate business. Write that down. Money comes by active commitment to legitimate business. Write it down. Money comes by active commitment to legitimate business. Money comes by active commitment to legitimate business. It's not even by prayer. Active commitment to legitimate business. That's what brings money. It's not that fathers understand this. That's why they are committed to work. Ah, one fish. And you see their children after them. Let's finish that one. Hallelujah. Everyone knows Abraham was a farmer in his days. Everybody knew. What does your children know you for? Sleeping and waking up? Or just eating and drinking with friends? What do they know you for? What do they know you for? It's what they know you for that they learn, they pick from you. That's why the moment you start raising children, Begin to prepare to be an example. Because your children will learn a lot from what they see. Let's go on. D. I think we are in D now. On that point one. The way you run your home should teach them how to raise a Christian home. Mere looking at your marriage should teach them the way you run your home. The way you run your home. The way you run your home. Sis, let your eyes be, let your head be up. Man, your wallet. 
He has asked, she has asked me two times now. Daddy, you were not at home. She was going to school. Daddy, hey, I want to ask you, whenever you and mommy have misunderstanding, who used to beg? Who used to set to first? I said, why are you asking? Abi, is that no answer? Said, why are you asking? He said, Daddy, I just want to know. I said, did you offend somebody you are looking for? I will not answer you. At the party ever. The way you run your home should teach them. That's why I see. I always tell people, before you decide to say, I'm quitting this marriage, think of your children. Oh. Think of your children. What message are you passing? Before you begin to say, I'm going, I'm going for a, a, a second wife. Think of your children. Some of you don't know that most of these things, the consequences majorly on the children. Run a Christian home. In fact, my children didn't know, but they will hear it today. Where I learned it, eh? That when she gained admission, I take your pocket money. My wife is giving Oye uh, our every uh, day too. It was Dr. Oye Niro. When we gave back to, was he, oh, and Oriola, yes. We didn't know how to give him drug. Because he used to have this uh, um, reflux. If you give him drug, it, it, will, it will look like a... Um, you ban him if you saw my palori. You know, so he used to come while he was now talking with us. We we're just talking at home. He said, "My daddy of blessed memory." He said, "My dad in those days, whenever he's giving pocket money to us, I learned that pocket money." He said he will give the ch- the girls double, and give the boys single. He said, he now asked one day, Daddy, why are you giving my sister? Why are you giving my sister money more than me? Am I not the man of the house? He said, women have needs and more temptations than you, the boys. When he said it, he now started analyzing. Then he also talked about his father, we always tell you, I didn't want to raise, I don't want to raise children that will be going to buy Gary beans. One cup, in two cups outside. That it is what you raise them to be that they will become, even in their own home. I won't forget, Uriola was not even up to a year. From then I made up my mind. And Imarara is la gulomo. Me, Imarara is la gulomo. Imarara is la gulomo. Imarara is la Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, they are the ones that they don't know that style. It is the foundation you lay. I used to say, the greatest way to teach people is to teach them by them observing you. It's more effective than you sitting down and say, okay, write this down. Don't buy beans one cup. Don't buy rice one cup. Say here. You can do better. Yes, Shout it aloud. Yes, Where are we now? E. Let's take one more. Your priority setting style. Your priority setting style. Write that down. Take note of this. Your priority setting style. Oh, we have a lot of people online. God bless you. God bless you, man. Your priority setting style should make them understand the order of important things. Now, look up here. I will explain. Your priority setting style should make them understand the order of important things they should give their attention to. Listen, your children should look at you and understand priority. They should understand the important things they should give their time, their money, and their talent to. Do you know that some parents have not, they don't know priority. Imagine, you don't have a car, a house of your own, and you have three cars. And you are a tenant. It's wrong. And you are parking four cars in a, in a landlord's house. What are you teaching your children? You are showing your, your children to we, we not think that having a house of their own for, 
first is more important. You must teach them by your attitude the important things. Now, a pastor friend, one of my friends visited me just now. The, the daughter just finished from uh, Ajayi Kada University Mass Com. She was posted to Yobe State to, to serve. And they said it's a, it's a foreign company. By the time she was finishing uh, uh, her ser- service, they, they wanted to retain her. But he said no. He was telling me, he said no. You must go for your master's. I said, that's good. That's good, sir. It's good. And I told the girl, thank God for your daddy. Don't pay attention to money now. Equip yourself. That's proper priority setting. Some of you, your children just finished from secondary school and they are working already. Collecting money. And you are happy. Esther, you are happy. Esther, you are happy. Esther, you are happy. Esther, you are happy. You, did, you are not setting a standard for them. Let them understand priorities. I, 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 am I communicating? Let them understand. And how can you make them understand? It is you, your own life. The way you set your own. We were discussing at home one day. And then Nina said, Daddy, can I pick up a job so that I can assist you? She had good intention. I'll be my, my wife. But of all flew off instantly. Is something wrong with you? Are you okay? She was not feeling bad. I, I want to help my parents. She started crying. I said, are you okay? Did I ask for your help? I don't need your help. What is important to me now is your education. Face it. Don't do any business. Face your, your education. When she now finished, we now started explaining to her, you don't have anything yet. Admission into higher institution is not yet an achievement until you are true. I said, when you finish your first degree, you have gotten it, Otini. Then you go to the next one. But you gain admission, you now say, you have achieved. You have not achieved, whoa. It's right here now. How do you set priorities? Let them see how you set it. Discuss your priorities in their presence as husband and wife. What do we do next? Ask them. We used to do our morning prayer. Uh, we bring her in. A, a, when we were at, uh, was it at Deniji? We started that time. We now discuss. Okay, what do we need now? What do we need to do now? When we wanted to move out of tenancy, we told them we need to pray. We need to stop paying rent. Thank God that my wife raised it. If we are still paying rent now, my children won't be in school. Because university level, private university, na manio. But thank God we're able to move out. Before they got to this stage. Set, tell your neighbor, priority. Teach them to set it. I taught them. Me and my wife, thank God for her. When did we mount pressure on Oni to do NECO? She did her NECO SS1. Cleared all her papers. I said, keep it. You will still do work. But just keep it. Know that you have gotten it. We register for WAEC SS2. She's still in it. She'll soon finish. Now, once she's through, I, I told her, you will, I will not tell you the next thing. But she has gotten her NECO result complete since SS1. I shall call, I shall initiate priority. So if you now be lining up your children, you say, you know what? Fasasi is what you are going to wear on your birthday. Alberto Perez shoe is what you are going to wear to match. Then cushy hat, like Mrs. Christopher, is what you are going to wear. It will not complete. Your, your children will not be saying, you see my wristwatch, my mommy bought wristwatch of $5,000. My shoe is this dollars. Those things, in the next few hours, new products will come out. Once it comes out, it's no longer in fashion, in vogue. It's not easy to set priorities. It's not easy, I must tell you. It's, when you are setting priorities, it's like you are throwing money away. Priority is anything, eh? Anything you are, you are setting for the gain of the future. Am I communicating? You don't understand me. You didn't understand me. Are you sure you are here? Can you see that the job of becoming a father is not easy? Your priority setting, like I said, style, should make them understand the order of important things they should give their attention to the order of important things. 
we got one phone for my son. Okay, let him be using for cattle. But we discovered, Abby. Ah, my, ah, my wife, we're discussing. And she was saying, it's like this thing. It's not making him to do his assignment. Honey, he's too young for him to focus on cartoon. Some of you, it is you, the wife, that will be disturbing the man. Be phone, phone, be phone, phone. But, I took the phone and I told him, I won't release this until your next holidays. He cried. They will cry. Priority setting doesn't always look like good. Say, yeah. I know that you are angry. But it's the truth. That's why children don't like their fathers. Ma? I'm coming to that. You know, I've started the thing now. They will, they will like you now. Have you win? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's come here. Let's come here. So what am I saying? Show them. Now, what are those things? I'm talking to the fathers now. Parents, what are those things that are important to you? For instance, your, your prayer. Any prayer is important. Don't wake up in the morning, eh? And let your children not see you praying. No. Let them understand that you start our day with prayer. When the minister's conference, a pastor's wife wrote a letter. Bishop, please help me. My husband will always listen first thing in the morning to Ainlao Mongura. <laughs> Sir, what do we do about it? I'm, I'm telling you true life story. You know I cannot lie. And my mentor took the question and read it. Everybody burst into laughter. Pastor, I love Mawura Levinji. And I love the man. I love one thing with the man. The man has a humble heart. His wife was seated. You know, some of you, when your wife reports you, you go back home to fight them. I pray one prayer for you. May your wife not become dumb and deaf concerning you. Listen, I learned something on Facebook last week. I caught it. Somebody said, who is a true leader? A true leader is a man, a leader, that can accommodate people of different perspectives. They are around, people that will criticize you, part of your leadership. That's why whenever we are doing a workers' meeting, I used to like Mommy Dolako's contribution. Mr. Wood. It's like her contribution is contradictory, Abby. But when she says it, I listen. You know why I listen? This is a, I'm seeing somebody that is speaking from a different view. Now, if it, it does not mean that it is, it is right, but when it is now wrong, I'm not, no, 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 let me now tell you where you missed it. But some of you, you only like people that will be around you and be saying, yes, ma. Yeah, praise singers, yes, sir. Are we going to break down Cocoa House and build it in three days? Yes, sir, we can do it, sir. They will leave you wait for it to break down. When you now finish breaking it down, you now look back. <laughs> they have gone to your tent, to Israel. So don't pray that as a leader you have only people that will agree with you. Don't pray for that kind, don't pray that kind of prayer. That kind of prayer will make it easy for you to fall. That's why when David was saying, go and bring Bathsheba for me. Go and bring Bathsheba. Go and bring Bathsheba. Nobody could say, sir, it's Raya's wife. Oh. Sir, it's a sin. No. Ah, sir, don't do it. Oh. They, every one of them went to bring ah, tobalashe, tobalashe. Everybody went to bring Bathsheba. They slept with Bathsheba. Return her back. They return her back. Keep quiet. They kept quiet. Nobody said anything. Until God, by himself, went to reveal to Nathan the prophet. So, back to my bishop now said, man of God, if you start your day with Ainlao Mangura song, what will your children start their day with? They will start with, they, they, my wife said, with the video, some with whiskey. Sir? The grace came with Zazu. <laughs> we will think about Zazu. 
show them priority. Are you getting what I'm saying? We start with God. If they love buying food, show them why we cook at home. Show them that all these clothes, 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 it's not important. It's good, but it's not important. We are in church, we are alive. We don't? Okay, you don't understand. That's okay. That I love Mobula. How do we say it in English now? The husband used to listen to worldly music in the morning. Worldly, worldly. The man will wake up, he's a pastor. In the morning, the first thing he will play a set of worldly music. He said he used to get inspiration from it. The greatest morning inspiration you need is Holy Spirit. And you know, call me. I was listening to one of her daughters. She was telling, that's your mom. She was telling her husband on, on Saturday that, ah, she followed the early morning prayer that I've been taking for the past one week on the internet back to back. He says, sir, you have been saying one thing for this whole one week. And that was the same thing Brother Precious told me. On Friday, that's her. I noticed one thing about all the things you have been preaching. The same thing this woman said to yesterday. That I now know the next thing to do. That's how to start your day. If you are always on the phone 24-7, your children will also be on the phone. Let them know that there is time for everything. Priority setting. Ah, Holy Spirit. We have just spoken one and we have about seven of them. I'm saying this for you to know that the responsibility of a father is not small. There are several things that a father loves, but he can't do it because he wants to be an example. Are you blessed this morning? Are you sure you have learned something? Let me summarize this one. We have Kadejo, okay, BJ, or Oppo. He said on point, sir, online. So the summary of all these points, one, what does it take to become a father? It takes the determination to become what? To live an exemplary life. An exemplary life. I want to be an example to these children. When we, I and my wife were paying for all those exams, it was not easy. But me, I would jewa last job for all that exam. All those exams, we were paying school fees and still doing external exams. In fact, my daughter came back from that exam. She came back extremely sick because she did neck at the age of thirteen. Is it that I'm twelve floors, Abby? Extreme, she was so sick. I said, don't worry. When her result came out, we have it. Can you see? You have, you have it. Keep it. And but daddy, why do I need to see do why? Do why? Because we heard that they say Neko is not recognized outside the country. Who says you will finish your education in Nigeria? Do why? Keep it. Do we keep it too? So that when they, they, let there be nothing they ask for academically that you cannot present. Do you think after No, it's from me. I mistakenly punched it here. Because they know that we are sacrificing for them. Who you see? You now see some parents are ah, oh, oh, what to your cafe come on. In the mule coffee cave. When my daughter gained admission to Lee ask my wife. People came to us. Some family members said, ah, Chair, what is the common way university? Eh, ni Eh, the common way university and Nishin come in. Pastor, you, some people said, Deep out the admission. Let her go next year. Let her do jam again. 
She may not forgive us. She may not, I'm th- she may not forgive us. We may convince her she will agree, but she may not forgive us. That I had this opportunity, my parents did not allow me. So we said, don't worry, go. If it is for us to be drinking Gary now, we want you to know that your education is a priority both to you and to us. Yeah, let's rise up. We continue in the next service. I didn't expect you to clap. I thought you'd be angry. Can you see that you are angry? <laughs>